Good morning, Jackson, Mississippi, and all surrounding areas. You've tuned in to the Free Range Human Show of Choice, mm-hmm. your daily dose of reality radio. It starts now. Good morning. My name is Clay Edwards. This is, of course, the Clay Edwards Show. And uh, I'm glad to be here. We're streaming worldwide on WYAB.com and the TuneIn app. Just search WYAB if you're ever outside the listening area. Also, again, this morning we're streaming live on the Save Jackson Facebook page for the first segment of the show. The second segment and on, we'll have Anson B. Walker here with the Walker Lifestyle. We'll do our weekly health segment. His his new app is finally ready to drop. So he'll have more than just the website. He'll also have the Anson B. Walker Lifestyle the Walker Lifestyle app, so you can have it on your phone for all your health and fitness nuts out there. And that should be every one of us, right? All right, uh, real quick, a little house cleaning. My good friend, my brother from another mother, Mr. Chad Wesley, just dropped his new album this morning. Go out and support Mississippi's best guitar player and blues musician. And I said it. You could tell Kingfish I said it. Chad Wesley's the best. Uh <laughs> It's all, it's all, it's all up for a discretion, but, uh, that's, that's my opinion. I love my brother. So you get out there, wherever you download music from, go download the new Chad Wesley album. Yeah, this Saturday night, my 45th birthday party. I've teamed up with a couple of good friends of mine, Daryl Arnold, aka Dirty D and Trevor Palmer, bartender extraordinaire. We're throwing a triple threat birthday bash. It's free to get in. We just want to say, Hey, to everybody, have a good time. Take some pictures and stuff. Get, make some mem- make some new memories. How about that? We're going to be out at the Back Porch 471. That's right there on Highway 471 in Brandon, right across from Ellis Autoplex. Can't miss it, man. You know where Back Porch 471 is. They got the best crawfish in Mississippi, but I believe they'll just be the, it'll just be regular menu items available: catfish, burgers, all that stuff, cold beer, and uh, charade unplugged. We'll be playing live, and uh, like I said, we'll be having a good time. So. Starts at 7 p.m. Hope everybody can make it out for that. Uh, Looking forward to it. All right. Uh, The Mac Hike of Flowood phone line, we'll open that up in the second segment. That phone number is 601-879-0002. The Guns and Gear text line, uh, if you want to get your thoughts and opinions read on the show, is 769-241-1944. Man, let's just jump in. I... I asked this question on Facebook the other day, and I'm just curious if anybody else has seen this or has an answer for this. Why are kids these days wearing hoodies in the middle of summer? Long sleeve hoodies with the hood up in the middle of summer. What is wrong with these children? And I under, you know, it, and I, it kills me. When I ask this on Facebook, you get all these kind of, I, I can't help but call them woke responses. It's maybe they, 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 they have body negativity or maybe it's all they can afford is a hoodie, but I bet they have a t-shirt on under that hoodie. It's 120 degrees. You know, they all, all kind of other stupid stuff, but the, the, the body positivity, negativity thing always trips me. I was like, most of the people I see doing this weigh a hundred pounds, wet with wet with a hoodie on. I don't think they're too ashamed of their bodies if they're wearing a if they're skinny with a hoodie on. But that's just my opinion. You know, I'm a fat guy, so you know, I, I don't. I, I always think skinny people are proud to be skinny. If you if you got an answer to that, text into the show. I you know in Jackson, I think they're just hiding their guns under the hoodies. That is my thought process there. So. I don't know if you, if you got an answer. That's my question of the day. Well, one of my questions of the day is why are kids wearing hoodies in the middle of summer? What is wrong with them? What kind of drugs are they on that have them so cold that they need to wear a hoodie in the summer? Because I'm warm natured and maybe this is something I should consider if there's something out there that'll make me feel cold in the summer because uh, my air conditioning bill is getting out of hand. So if y'all have discovered something, that I ain't aware of, let your boy know. Let your boy know. <laughs> All right, so here is um here's the real question of the day. Is 
I was listening to something the other day. I can't remember what it was. Oh, yeah, there's this whole thing about the Oklahoma football coach. One of the Oklahoma football coaches was reading the Oklahoma Sooners, was reading something, some handwriting that somebody else had written or whatever, and I guess he read the N-word a couple times in a class or in a, in a coach's meeting or in a meeting with the players, and he had to resign from his job for reading somebody else's writing. I mean, he read the N word a couple times, and the coach, the head coach, Brett Venables, pretty much told me he had to resign over that because the poor little fragile kids were they were just too fragile to be able to hear the N word, even though they say it themselves a thousand times a day. It got me to thinking. If you're an employer out there or you're a supervisor, you know, in charge of hiring, firing, managing people. If the N word is so bad and it's and anybody that says it, if even little white cheerleaders on a bus on the way to a football game are singing a rap song and it comes on and they they lip sync the words to the rap song, it's so bad that they must lose their college scholarships, high school Everything. Get, they're canceled. They're done. No, you're a racist for the rest of your life. You might as well have been burning crosses in black people's front yards for uttering the word, for lip syncing the N word while listening to a rap song. If it's that bad, should we fire black employees that say it too? I mean, we should do our part to eradicate this word off the face of the earth. I don't, and I don't care which spelling either. With an A on the end, with an ER on the end, if it's that bad, then then we need to hold everybody. You know, hashtag equality. We need to treat treat it equally. Treat everybody equally when it comes to the use of the big N. You know, they like to they, when they're getting when they want to call you a racist and they don't want to say the word racist, they like to refer to it as the big R. Said uh, the the big R, and I got a text here that says uh, apparently he was reading it from a off an iPad, in the uh, in, in a player's iPad, in the in the room there. And what's funny is I saw a story where Deadspin, which who knew Deadspin still existed? Let's see, I'm gonna pull it up. This is on Outkick, and I, and I but I just think this is important. It may seem silly to y'all. But as often as this stuff gets brought up and how we're still canceling people for even reading or uttering words, you, there's like you're not allowed to use the N-word in any context. Unless you're a Hollywood actor and you're saying in a movie, that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. Go back and watch, uh, oh, hell, what's the movie with uh, Jamie Foxx and Leonardo DiCaprio, Django Unchained. Go back and watch how excitedly those white Democrats say the N word. That's a Quentin Tarantino movie, too, by the way. But um, yeah. So plot twist: it says uh, the iPad that Kel Gundy, that's the coach that had to be fired, belonged to Drake Stoops, which is ironic because that is uh, Bob Stoops' uh, son, I guess. Anyway, but De- Deadspin just quotes Twitter as the source. I just saw a random news story. It's like, oh, there it is. Twitter's my source. But anyway, you can find that story at outkick.com if you are interested in in the source material for this rant. And I want to know, the phone lines will be open in just a minute, or you can text into the show. Should black employees be fired, or Mexican, or anybody else, should all employees be held to the same standard when it comes to using the N-word? I'll tell you what, I don't normally take calls during the first segment, but we're going to take one now on the Mac Hike of Flowwood phone line. Hey, caller, you're on there. Uh, yeah, just a point of clarification on the use of racial slurs in the workplace. Yes. Uh, EEO policy states that uh, you cannot use racial slurs in the workplace as well as any sexual harassment or race, color, religion, sex, or national order. Any type of slur of that nature cannot be used in the workplace, and an employee can file a lawsuit if the employer fails to take action. So that's why when a coach fires or disciplines uh, a coach, because a lawsuit could be in the works 
A complaint could be in the works, so you have to take action if you are notified as an employer that a racial slur, whether the employees are two black employees using racial slurs. I worked in federal government. Trust me, if you are black and you use the term against another black person, you can be disciplined. So I think sometimes folks are not in the know. Uh, you just need to go and look at some of the EEO cases and, and uh, read up on it, and you'll see whether it's females using the B word or what have you, slurs against women, they can be disciplined because it is not professional. And e- everybody in the workplace has to be treated with dignity and respect, and that's in any workplace. And you open yourself up to lawsuits when you don't take action. Now, have a good day, sir. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, so he made a great call. Uh, great call there. Uh, I know people listening on Facebook can't hear the phone calls, but that's why I need to tune into WYAB one hundred three point nine FM. But um, he said that in it could be a lawsuit if, if somebody makes a racial comment to somebody else, a racist comment to somebody else, or a disrespectful comment, even a female calling another female the B word, that they can be uh, written up, fired, whatever, because they can be lawsuits. Why, well, you know. And I want to make sure I'm clear on my stance on this. I don't think anybody should be saying it. Well, we, we've established that it's the most dangerous, hurtful word in the history of the world. So nobody needs to be able to say it. It needs to be put into a box, buried, and never spoken again by anybody. And anybody that says it needs to be lined up along a brick wall. I'm being a little facetious there before anybody clips that out and says that I said that. But, you know, look. If 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 we need to make if this word needs to go away and never be used again, it needs to be equal enforcement on people saying it. It needs to go away. Quit degrading yourselves by using it and calling each other that. It's, it's wildly uncomfortable to be around uh, black folks and them start calling each other that. It's wildly uncomfortable. You know. Just my thoughts. Just my thoughts. I don't know. I I, I thought. When I posted that on social media, that it would drum up a little bit more engagement because I, I really want these, these are. I always get told by black Democrats we got to have that tough conversation. We got to have that tough conversation about race. But anytime somebody actually wants to have a tough conversation that doesn't just end with "Oh yeah, I'm a racist," nobody ever wants to actually have it. So that's just my thoughts. I'll tell you what. Let's take one more call here before the break. On the Matt Kiker Flowood phone line. Hey, Carly, you're on there. Hey, Tim. Uh, I mean, hey, Clay, how you doing this morning? Hey, Chris, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Hey, I agree with you. I don't. I don't think nobody should use that word. I mean, I'm not no black Democrat or black Republican. I'm just a black American. I like it. So, I like it. So I, I don't like using that word from nobody. I don't care you black, white, Hispanic, or Jew. Don't call me that. If you call me that, I might do something that I shouldn't do. I won't, I don't have to, but. Me being a truck driver, I heard it best for my whole career on the CB, on CB radio. From that word to uh, Porsche monkey, biscuit lips, all that unnecessary bull crap. So I don't like being called neither by nobody. You can't call me, respect me. Don't I won't bother you. Don't bother me. So I, that. I like it, Chris. I'm on the same page, man. I hate. I always hated those. Uh, any of that. You know, I, I grew up in a time listening to rap music and and using the N and the with the A on the end. You know, like we thought we we thought we could call white white guys. You know, we thought we could call each other that and this that and the other. And as you get a little older, you lo- you learn that you know it just isn't acceptable. But exactly. the, the, I mean, the, I mean, the the porch monkeys and the and the and the dump the dumb stuff like that. I never got into that, man. I I, I don't like that. And uh, I mean, you just, just just say if you want to call somebody that, just call them the 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 N word with the hard R on the end, because I mean. You're saying the same thing. Exactly. See, I, I don't care for the, the A at the end or the E-R. It's the same thing to me. I mean, the first the first four letters still is N-I. You know, you know. Yep. So, I mean, can you change the E-R to the A? That don't mean nothing to me. It's still the same thing. I agree. I, we're on the same page. I, like I said, I just... Uh, it was just I saw that that story pop up about the football coach, and I was like, man, that uh, that kind of piques my interest a little bit here. I'm curious what other people think about this. I mean, I think he should be fired if he he knows he can't read that. I don't care if he was reading somebody else's writing. You know, in this day and age, even whether you agree with it or not, you know, in this day and age, on a college campus, you can't say that as a white man. Exactly. I mean, so I mean, I, I, if for nothing I, I, else, fire for stupidity. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think nobody should sit here. I agree with you. There. I mean, especially. 
I mean, I mean, just think about it. For a black person to call another black person that, and I don't feel in with the E R or the A, it still doesn't make sense. It's yeah. still derogatory. I agree. I mean, you know, look, and I can make another argument for my First Amendment rights and this, that, and the other, and that and that could be a hill somebody else can die on on this. But if, but taking that out, taking that out of the mix, if we're gonna make if we're gonna fire people for using that word, it needs to be equal, equal across the board. You know, same rules apply to everybody. Chris, I got to take a break, man. Have a have a great day. You too, thanks. Uh huh. All right, man. You're listening to the Clay Edwards Show. We'll be right back on one hundred three point nine W Y A B. Breaking rules when necessary. Welcome back in to the Clay Edwards show. This segment is going to be brought to you by Watkins Construction and Roofing. A roof repair can cause you a lot of stress. Choosing the right roofing company to repair your roof is very important. Most contractors are going to try to convince you that replacement is the only way to go. And that, my friends, that is not the Watkins way. They believe in an honest assessment that doesn't necessarily mean replacement. In most cases, all you need is a repair. So whether you have a leaky roof, you need chimney roof repair, flat roof repair, roof water leak, shingle roof repair, metal roof repair, chimney flashing repair needed, Watkins Construction and Roofing is your go-to roof repair specialist. Give them a call today for your complimentary roof assessment at 601-966-8233 or check them out online at WatkinsConstructionInc.com. And with all these torrential downpours we've been having every afternoon, I bet you probably know if you have a leak or not at this point. But, hey, water can hide. It can get up there and cause mold and up in your attic and whatnot. So give Watkins Construction or Roofing a call today and let them get you rolling. All right, man, I am joined here in studio by Anson B. Walker with the Walker Lifestyle. Anson, how are you? I'm good, brother. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Um, got a little something to add to your first segment. So when I was in the military uh, boot camp, November 2004, we had this huge general assembly. It was probably 800 of us. And they told us we were not to utter the N-word. In any form, shape, or fashion, nobody. And, dude, I watch people get kicked out of the military for using that word, black and white. Good. So, I mean, my, my point is just equal enforcement. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Equal enforcement. i tell you what. Uh, we got Derek on hold here on the Matt Clark and Flowood phone line. I'm sure he's got a good take on this. Hey, good morning, Derek. Hey, good morning, my friend. Hey, on, on the infamous N-word, um, any word that insults, denigrates, and could lead to physical harm, should be outlawed. This is why we don't walk around calling epithets for so-called Jewish people, right? Because they have spun decades and decades and dollars and dollars, you know, against anti-Semitism. But yet, why is it it's always the N-word that's always the issue, whether you for it or against it? It's not even a question that nobody walks around and calls themselves the K-word. I agree. Agreed. And also... If we don't do it with the N-word, let's do away with African-American, too. Because I'm, I'm just as equally insulted when I'm referred to as that. Derek, I, ref- I have no ties to the continent of Africa whatsoever. Well, that's your country. I said, Africa is a continent. Which country did I come from on that continent? Yeah. I ref- and that's what people don't understand. So if we're going to do away with words, I mean, let, 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 let's, let's get a fresh start. If you're, if you're several generations in this thing, when do you stop being Italian-American or... Spanish or um, you know Irish American or Native American or something like that. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Derek. Is any application I ever fill out, I put European American in there just for fun because, dude, I'm gonna laugh at some of this stuff. I, I can't take it serious anymore. I'm I'm too old for this crap. I'm, I'm, I do too. I mark other on everything. Yeah. I don't want, I'm not going to let them say a white guy, he doesn't qualify. Well, it's Caucasian on everything, you know, and it's just so funny to me. It's about, I just have fun with it, but I'm with you 100%, brother. Uh, great point. And, 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 to be, and to be correct, nobody on this country is, 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 is the same color as a black t shirt. We're different shades of brown, you're yeah. different shades of red. So if, if we don't get terms right, let's get them correct. And, and like I said, um, First of all, this N-word thing, I think, you know, people of color should stop calling themselves that. I don't like to be referred to that, and I don't like to be referred to African-American. Yeah. yeah no, you know, I just, because when you see me, you disregard my Scott Irish and Native, Native American roots as well by saying, yo, you're a black man or you're African-American. Yeah, well, we all bleed red, man. I just think we're all brothers and sisters in Christ, and that's the way I look at people. So. Oh, oh yeah, me too. But let me also say this real quick. Um 
everybody misconstrues the First Amendment. Um, the First Amendment protects free speech against the government. Okay, free speech don't don't stop you from getting a taste slapped out of your mouth. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, and we got a text. We got a text on the guns and gear text line. That says words should never be outlawed. Skin should be thickened. And I, I, at the end of the day, I do agree with that. But if we're gonna if we're gonna say that all this stuff um, is the worst words ever, and we're not allowed to speak certain words because words hurt and words are more dangerous than weapons, then I, all I'm saying is the enforcement of these rules should be equal across the board. Well, I'm not even looking at it as a word. It's the connection that it implies is what I'm dealing with. Just like when you call somebody the B word. Now, biblically speaking, where that term came from um, is was 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 a term for a female dog. In the in the Bible scripture, I don't have it in front of because I'm terrible with numbers. It says a shameless woman shall be counted as a dog, and that's where the female dog got its incantation from. So when a person calls themselves that, you actually bringing down the Lord's damnation when a female calls on the female that. Or she refers to herself that because it says a shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. So what was the shortened form of that? You know, the B word. Yeah. But going back to the First Amendment, it don't stop prevents from getting the taste slapped out of your mouth. <laughs> but Dave Chappelle best said it. He said the First Amendment is first for a reason. The second one is there just in case the first don't work out. <laughs> yeah. All right, brother. Thank you. Hey, y'all have a good one. You too. <laughs> All right, Anson. What's going on, brother? I love Dave Chappelle, by the way. I do too. Oh, that dude is real. He, you know, and he has survived a lot of stuff to still be the number one. I think he's the number one stand-up comedian, number one comedian. He in is, the in the world. He is absolutely incredible. He's the most talented comedian I've probably ever witnessed in my lifetime. And he, I, I'm talking Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, all of them. He's he's right there in the upper echelon. He has the longevity, yeah, that no other one has sustained. Um, and he never sold out. No. I know there's some arguments that he – that's why he left the Chappelle show because he kind of sold out and let let them make it too racist, you know, like just too oblivious. I mean, obvious, not oblivious, too obvious. Yeah. But at the end of the day, he never sold out. He never went Disney. He never went – he never did what Martin did. He never did what uh, Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy's the, the, the best example. Now, I, look, nobody can argue with you going and making money. And, you know, I'm sure Eddie, Eddie was more wealthy than he's ever been, yeah. ever, ever would have been. But he sold out from from Eddie Murphy Raw to uh, these ridiculous <laughs> uh, movies he does for Disney and stuff. Yeah, he went from funny to unfunny in about a year. And stayed there. He and he stayed know, there, yeah. The, the understanding is, now COVID derailed this, but he was about to start doing some stand-up again. I'm hoping that we get yeah. an old-school Eddie Murphy oh. I mean, raw is as raw, good as it gets. Delirious, yeah, yep, something like that. Um, you know, Preacher Pryor, the Sunset Strip, incredible, yeah, incredible. Yeah, we, we, America needs some comedy. It needs a yeah. great, it needs some great stand up right now, and we need it from our black guys because they're allowed to to do things. Yeah, they they say things that white guys aren't. I mean, I would love to have some funny white guys get up there and do it too. And and they're trying, man. And Joe, what Joe Rogan and Burt Kreischer and that old Tom Segura and what's the skinny white dude that's uh on, was on Comedy Central for years? Um, good looking guy. He he's not scared of anything. He'll uh he's he's he got his own show. I'll think of it in the break. I'm sure. Tom Green. No, uh, uh-uh, way better than him. Uh, yeah. relatively new. Um, golly, what's his name? He'll say anything. He doesn't discriminate against anybody, and he's he's got B A L L S. Yeah. So, well, we'll uh, we'll see if we can figure out who that is. Yeah. All right, let, let's take a break real quick. Okay. We'll come back. We'll reset and get this uh, get the Walker Lifestyle segment started. You're listening to the Clay Edwards Show. Join in studio by Anson B Walker. The Walker Lifestyle dot com. Rules when necessary. Welcome into the Clay Edwards Show. Hey guys, get out to Raymond Farmer's Market tonight. It's barbecue night. And if you tell them you heard it on the Clay Edwards Show, or WYAB for that matter, they're going to give you free dessert with your food. Now, I know that contradicts what we're in here talking about health and fitness today, but it's okay to have a cheat day. Anson, I'll tell you that. Absolutely. It is okay to have a cheat day. And a barbecue and a free dessert sounds like a hell of a cheat day to me. And, uh, of course, tomorrow night's catfish night and Friday, Saturday night is steak night. And, hey, and depending on your diet, steak is A-OK. And so is barbecue, for that matter, as long as you don't put all the uh, sugary sauce on it. So and if, and if, uh, if, you, if they know how to cook barbecue, uh, you don't need sauce. 
You do not need sauce. So look, check them out. RaymondFarmersMarket.com and Raymond Farmers Market on Facebook. All right. Anson B. Walker. I love throwing a B in there. TheWalkerLifestyle.com. It is your online life coach, health coach, dietitian, the whole nine yards. And the big news is the app should be ready any day now. It's up for approval with Apple. Yeah. It's probably tomorrow, and uh, I'll get that out on social media, but I'm excited about that. Uh, Ross Jensen has worked his tail off on that, and uh, we've added stuff to the website the last two weeks, and then that's going to all be accessible through the app. And it'll probably you can probably get it tomorrow, um, and I'll, I'll get it out there on social media, and then we'll, we'll really blow it up next week. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. So, Anson, what you got for so us? So, the week? comedian I was talking about while oh. ago was Daniel Tosh. Yep, Daniel Tosh. He's hilarious. And and several people text in and say, what about Bill Burr? And, yeah, man, some, you know, sometimes those Captain Obvious things are sitting right in front of your face and you forget to mention them. Yes, yeah. Bill Burr is, uh, yeah. is not afraid of anybody either. <laughs> and we, we, people are coming. Comedians are coming out of this uh, wokeism stronger yeah. than ever, but there's some that will just never rebound. They're no, just, I and mean, Joe Rogan's not afraid of it. No. Man, I, yeah, no. but I'm going to be honest. I no, I don't consider Joe Rogan a stand-up. I know he thinks he's a stand-up comedian, yeah. but if he wasn't Joe Rogan, I don't think he would be well, a he, stand-up comedian. He's admitted his failures, yeah. his, which I got. I got. I, I appreciate that. I applaud him for that. Yeah. But his, his interviews on his podcast are the best. Yeah, and he is the best interviewer, talker, podcaster, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. in the world. But I still don't – I know he travels with Dave Chappelle and he sells yeah. out arenas doing stand-up, but he's selling out arenas doing stand-up because he's one of the most famous people in the world. I agree. I don't think people are actually going to laugh. And, look, admittingly, I've only watched about a half of a Joe Rogan special. He may be the funniest comic in the world. He's not. But I, I don't think he is. No, he, he just makes sense. Yeah. And that's why I like exactly. him. Exactly. So. All right, Anson, what you got yeah, for us so this week? today I've got Choose Your Heart. Life is hard. Any way you slice it up. You've got to pick your heart. Marriage is hard. Divorce is hard. Choose your heart. Obesity is hard. Being fit is hard. Choose your heart. Being in debt is hard. Being financially disciplined is hard. Choose your heart. Communication is hard. Not communicating is hard. Choose your heart. Life will never be easy. It will always be hard. But we can choose our heart. Choose wisely. 90% 90% of my problems in my life have been self-inflicted in some form, shape, or fashion. Every problem that I have mentioned, there's a solution that awaits you. Choose wisely. Everyone wants to be on the mountaintop, overlooking our world, breathing deep, relaxing, just taking it all in. But very few are consciously or daily putting in the extraordinary amount of work it takes to get to the top. I've had incredible ups and downs in my life thus far, and the good outweighs the bad by a long shot. But I think this is where we lose sight in life. I've grown the most as a man, as a heterosexual Christian man, through my failures. You see, in the low valley is where the grass grows and the water flows. It's where we grow as people, as leaders, as children of God. But you got to be willing to put that work, that effort, that fortitude, the humility, and most importantly, the 100% consistency on a daily basis to reach the summit. Most people aren't willing to do that 24-7. 365. And that's a fact, my friends. You see, here's the deal. Most people are not living. They are just merely existing. Most people are so scared about what others think about them, keeping up with the Joneses, whichever way the wind blows. Why? Because there's no conflict. It's the path of least resistance. Not me, my friends. I'll always swim upstream. I'll always respect myself enough to eat clean, work out, and be a servant of Jesus Christ and try to be a flashlight in a somewhat dark world. I'm Anson B. Walker. I'm from Canton, Mississippi. And if anything I just stated offends you, that's your problem. I'm here to make a difference. God put me here to help you physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually if you want it. But you got to ask for help. I'm not a mind reader. Health and fitness is what I do. Well, let's roll. Clay. Answer B. Walker, I got it. I'm having an idea as you were reading that. <laughs> so, you know, I'm famous on TikTok now. Okay. So I'm, I'm, a, t- I'm a TikToker. Okay. I'm a celebrity. Light. Nice. And that kind of stuff right there does very well on TikTok. You, we need to get an Anson B. Walker. Okay. Or just, I mean, I'm using TikTok as a catch-all for yeah, yeah, social yeah. media videos. I've heard of it. I mean, I, I'm well, not. Well, yeah. you got a huge following on Instagram. Yeah. You know, what, almost 100,000 followers, yeah. something like that. Yeah. That's massive, by the way. Yeah. I don't have 100,000 followers across all mine, mine together. So uh, <laughs> golf clap in Thank the you. studio. Uh, you need to be putting that kind of content in video, reading just like that. 
looking. All right, I got to get somebody to show. I probably my niece can show me how to do it. I'm and, sure. And posted them videos to, yeah. to social media. That that's the kind of stuff that goes viral. Okay. Um, good motivational, inspirational yeah. stuff like that. And um, Dude, I, mean, I got the office at four thirty this morning, and man, I'm just you know that that morning time is when I'm really sharp and crisp and clear. And I saw something I was reading, and I just kind of put that together. But it's it's the truth, Clay. It's man, life is hard. Man, I'll never get up here and say it's easy. Dude, marriage. I'm six weeks into marriage. Marriage ain't easy. We we had to, we had our our first little uh, dust up, you know, a week ago or so, and we're good. But, but what what did you do wrong? Um, I <laughs> I did not communicate on something, and yeah. it was clearly my fault, and I owned it. And I got to do a better job, but I'm used to being selfish and being by myself and being a bachelor. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, it's it's like a fish out of water, and that's that's my fault, and I'm gonna get better at it. I'm glad you said that on communication, because mm-hmm. that has been, you know, for a guy that is looked upon looked at as a communicator, I am absolutely terrible. Yeah. At personal communication, I think a lot of guys are Clay. I really do. Um, I think women are much better at that than we are just in general. I'm not being sexist. I'm not stereotyping, but I just I, being married, being with Tiffany now for about three years. Um, she, I'm, I'm getting better at it. I'm getting better, and I and I, I've got a ways to go. But, um, dude, it's it's uncomfortable sometimes being that open of a communicator. Well, you know, because I always when when I have to say something that isn't rainbows and butterflies, I had to start it with because I have such a poor way of saying things that I may really aggravate crystal yeah i i have to start with i'm not saying this about you necessarily <laughs> i do this too right you All know right. so don't take this the wrong way but we need to do this yeah you know and I, i'm trying to learn how to not just say why haven't you done this yeah yeah you know or whatever like look i haven't done it either but how can we do this how can we well, fix this together yeah like with tiff like you know i'm a guy i'm used to smacking my brother in the nose you know that's how we do um, that's not, that's not the way it is with girls, you know, and I'm, I'm learning that at a late age in life. And then of course, you know, having two nieces, man, that's a different ball game. It just is. I'm used to, man, it was me and Matt and with the guys growing up, that's, that's the way it was. And so I've got to get out of my Neanderthal ways, if you will, and do a better job of communicating in everything I do. Yeah, me, me and my daughter have a strange way of communication. We just, when the other person picks up the phone, they just, we just go straight into how was it? What are you doing? Okay, talk to you tomorrow. You know, <laughs> right, there's no right. there's no bedside manners at all. It's yeah. just no, no pleasantries. You know, yeah. but, but we get to the point. Yeah, you know, so I like having that relationship with my daughter because we can talk about stuff. That's all. How old is your daughter? Twenty. Yeah, dude, that's 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 cool that you're at that that point. Well, you know, you try, you try. <laughs> it, 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 it takes a while. I mean, yeah. for better or worse, that's yeah. that's where we're at. Well, I, I like that. The choose your heart. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, dude, man. I I'm not gonna sit here and say. Being in shape's easy. It's not. Man, it's look, you think I really wanted to get up at three thirty this morning? Do you think I said super duper at three thirty this morning when that alarm went off? No. I might have said a cuss word. But I put my grab grabbed myself by the ear, got in the shower, made some breakfast, got to the office, and here we are midway through the morning. So Yeah, man. <clears throat> you know, you make a great point there. Like choosing to be financially dependent. It's hard, you know, financially independent. Independent, yeah. It, it, it is hard, too. You know, I mean, I was at the shop to 10 o'clock last night, had to go home, do some show prep, get back up at 5 o'clock this morning. Yeah. I don't even know what time I went to bed. Yeah. I had, but here I am. That's right. And, and, but, but, but you, you do these things because you want to, I, I, I've heard, I've heard somebody else say this. I don't know who to credit, who to credit. Do today what others won't so you can do tomorrow what others can't. Exactly. I love that. It's, I take it, but people ask me all the time, you know, what's the number one thing I can do at the gym to, to lose weight? What's the number one thing I can do at the gym? to? Uh, the number one thing you can do is show up day after day after day, and it's called consistency. And that is the superpower that God has blessed every one of us with. It's, it's called diligence. and But most people don't tap into it, Clay. Most people can do it for a week. Most people can't do it for a month. And I see it time and time and time and time again. And and that's one reason that, look, I may not finish first, but I'm dang sure not going to be last because I'm consistent. And that's that's just what it takes, man. Um, my decisions tomorrow that I'll do, I'll get up at 3.30 in the morning, that's all been made 10 years ago. Those decisions were made 10 years ago, what I'm going to do the, the rest of the week. Um, it's, I don't even think about it. It's just a reaction. You know, it's a habit. And that's what I'm trying to get my people to see long term. It's the stuff, the work I'm doing now. I'll see the results two or three years from now. The stuff you're doing right here on this radio program, Clay, 
you're going to benefit two, three, four years from now. That's that's how it works, man. Is there's no shortcuts. Discipline beats motivation every time. S- every time, yeah. D- discipline gives you freedom. It really does. But you gotta, you just gotta, you gotta hump, 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 bust it, bust it, bust it. Consistency, consistency, every day. Yeah. If I can give anybody any advice, if you're starting something new, whatever it is, a new job, a new habit, a new hobby. Uh, a second job, whatever it is, physical fitness. I mean, that's, that's always the big one, right? Yeah. Uh, or you're starting a podcast or whatever. Stay consistent. Be disciplined. And just keep doing it. It, it. Do it on the days you don't feel like doing it. That's right. Because those are the ones you'll feel best about having done it when you're done doing it. That was a lot of dudes. I love that. Right there. Dude, that's our language right there. That's that's Madison County. Is how. Yeah, I tell you what. Let's take one call real quick before we take this break. All right. Hey, hey, uh, you're on there. Hey, uh, Facebook uh, killed my comments about uh, fighting crime in Jackson the other day. They, they wouldn't let my comment go on. And, and all I said was that Jackson needs to take some of these cars that they've impounded and just put police in them, unmarked, let them ride around, and all these uh, bump and carjacking attempts. They should be able to, to put an end to that. that yeah, that's, a, that's a great point. You know, somebody did try carjacking a uh, an, an unmarked cop car a couple of weeks ago, and they caught a bullet. They tried shooting the cop. <laughs> and I, I, I want to say the cop shot him. Was they, I know the cop shot back. I think he shot them, but they ended up arresting two people, and one of them got shot, or both of them got shot. Yeah, I know for a fact they got shot. So yeah. they are they are actually doing some of that stuff. So, but we're just not hearing about it on the news and whatnot. But uh, yeah, it is happening. Babe. Great call there, brother. I, I got to take a break real quick. Thank you for listening this morning. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, bye bye. All right, we're going to take a break real quick. We'll be right back with Anson B. Walker to close out the show here on a lovely. Back into the Clay Edwards show. We're joined by Anson B. Walker with the WalkerLifestyle.com. That app's getting ready to drop. Hey, Anson, we got a great call during the break that we took off air. Yeah. And the caller said, you know, Clay, we need more men to stand up. And he goes, I've always been a little scared to do it because I thought I didn't want to be judged by men. He said, but bring, people bring up my past and this, that, and the other. He said, but God's already forgiven me. What am I afraid of? He said, I'm going to start standing up more, long story short. And I said, man, that's exactly why I get on here. And I tell y'all all about my faults, my past addictions, just all my problems, going to jail. I, I, there's nothing off limits when it comes to me because I'm not going to let somebody dangle something over my head. And say, oh, you know, just wait till Clay says this. We're going to bring this up. Right. Because I'm, I'm, if I haven't brought it up yet, it's because I hadn't thought about it. But you get the gist of it. I've done a lot of bad things. If you can think about it, I've done it. Yeah. And uh, some some stuff I didn't get caught for. <laughs> some stuff I did. You know, but just figure I've, I've done it. Yeah. And uh, there's nothing you're going to be able to hang over my head. I, I, I don't do that crap no more. I mean, look, I still sin. I still make mistakes. But um, I, I own all that. I'm not, I'm not up here trying to be something I'm not. I mean, this is. This is Clay Edwards. Yeah. One hundred percent. You know. For that's, better or for worse. That's so true too, man. It's, it's I mean, we're we're forgiven by the grace of God. We are. And I have to do a better job of forgiving people when they quote do me wrong, you know, mm-hmm. or uh, say something bad about me. You know, it's gonna always get back to you. And be bigger than that. Man, you know what I care about? I care about what my wife thinks about me. I care about what my brother thinks. You know what I'm saying? I care about what the good Lord thinks about me. And that's that's a short list, Clay. Yeah, my my pastor just texted me and asked me to say he wanted me to go on this uh this this trip thing this weekend. Yeah, and I'm like, you know what? I actually don't have any plans for the weekend. Well, I, I do Saturday night, I have my birthday. So, but but those are the things. Like yeah. you know, but try to be judged in the eyes, eyes of the Lord and the people that love you. Yeah, and j- do them well, right, and the, everybody else can uh, they'll figure it out. I just know this, man. I can't ever judge anybody because I know the stuff I've done. And I just don't, man. I look. I'm. I'm just not. My pay grade isn't that high. That's above mine. So. Anson, you got about ten seconds. Okay. How can, how can they hey, reach you? Uh, Anson B. Walker. Uh, six zero one nine two seven three two zero eight. Six zero one nine two seven three two zero eight. Send me a text. Let me help you. Uh, health wise, let me help you physically, mentally. TheWalkerLifestyle dot com. Uh, Jim Thorne up next. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace. Thanks for listening. Tune in tomorrow at 7 a.m. as the Clay Edwards Show discusses all that is going on in and around the city of Jackson. This concludes our broadcast day. Right here on 103.9 WYAB.